right friends so uh, we had covered the break statement uh, in the last session right um, and we learned quite a bit uh, on that uh, like we learned how we can actually break the sequence of the of the loop and come out of it exit out of the loop right um, today we are going to look at another scenario in this session we are going to look at another scenario where we will see how we can continue or skip a part of the loop um, when a particular condition is met right we will see some examples a uh, couple of examples on that right all right uh, so keep uh, en enjoying and i'll see you in the class Welcome back friends. So in the last session we saw about break. Uh, welcome back friends. So let's continue with our continue statement. Right. Okay. Uh, so like a break statement uh, which we saw in the earlier session where we used a particular break uh, statement to break the sequence of the code. Right. Sequence of execution of the code. Right. Right. So in this one I mean the continue statement is almost similar but a bit different okay in continue statement what happens is when a condition is the required condition is met it is going to skip that part of the condition but it will continue with the remaining loop till the loop is uh, closed all right um, so this is also again a type of uh, I mean uh, control flow isn't it right okay um, so so let's have a look on the uh, flow chart how it works out okay before we move into some examples right okay so here is the continue statement flow chart okay great so what happens here is so when there's a loop right expression is checked okay and if it is true then what happens is it is going to check the another part of the statement that is continue statement and in continue statement what happens is if the um, the result is true then it is going to skip that part and it is again go back to the to the loop right and once um, I mean if, and then in that again it is going to check if the condition is true or false and consider if the condition is true again it is going to come here to the continue loop and then consider that if it is n not um, meeting that requirement is not meeting then it is going to continue with the remaining part of the loop and then again um, to the uh, parent loop where actually it is going to check the condition whether, whether it is going to be true or false and if it is false then it is going to exit out of the loop right all right uh, so let's look at uh, with some examples okay great all right uh, guys i've actually keyed in a very small example for uh, i mean for some understanding so that uh, i mean i don't want to start with the uh, complicated example so a very short and sweet example here right all right um, so what happens here is for yeah val in pro it val is the variable right if val equal equal to i the capital i which is there in this pro it then continue and print wall right and then it is going to print thank you so what happens here is the objective of this one is as we have seen in the flow chart right it will check uh, the val in uh, pro it right it will check p um, no issues and it will print p then again it will go in this loop r no issues again it will print r and it will keep on continuing until it hit i and as soon as it hit high then it is going to skip and it will uh, continue with the loop and then it will uh, check t and then it will print t okay great let's have a look okay i'll as you can see it has done p r o t it has skipped i right and the objective was to skip i because 
um, that's how it is right I mean so now if if I would have made this as a small I I mean instead of a capital I because I want to show you um, another case another use case right let's see what happens uh, f5 and yes it is going to ask me to save because I've made the change in the code I click on OK and let's see now it has printed the IT because I is in caps right here the requirement was equal equal to I which is a small and in this R um, earlier code where the uh, where it is actually string is P R O capital I capital T right then uh, it's not meeting it is not the same isn't it it's the case is different that's why we can see here that it was able to print I also in this code isn't it okay guys now let's look at the other example now here is a, a bit of a, a quote uh, wherein um, consider that you have been asked to uh, write a code to find out the number if it is divisible by 5 or not okay great so below program will do, provide an example to continue statement yeah it will prompt for starting number and ending number the loop will only print the number that is divisible by 5 if the loop range if the lower range and the higher range is same then it will print invalid number range right all right so as usual this is the banner which a uh, user will see when when a user is executing this program it will prompt for uh, n1 which is uh, the variable to get the lower range number right and it's going to convert into int same way n2 is again going to take the high range number and again it is going to convert into integer format right? then it is going to print the f4 is for uh, form feed and all numbers divisible by 5 between n1 to n2 right? if n1 not equals to n2 right? now here is the loop which we are starting till now it was just the uh, the the normal codes right but from here it is now uh, the loop which is starting and yes again it is a nested loop here till here right if this condition is met then execute this one if not else print there was no valid range all right so let's consider if this expression is met so expression is equals range n1 n2 plus 1 because we want to include the the high range number which is provided by the user right so for i in expression this one and uh, that is the range n1 and n2 plus 1 right if i divisible 5 not equals to 0 continue and then uh, print that number is divisible by 5 right else print thank you all right let's look let's look at the execution of this code okay by clicking f5 Okay, I'll maximize the screen so I put the banner print number divisible by 5 is in given range so I give some 12 and it prompts for enter high range number so I give some 56 and then I hit enter so all numbers divisible by 5 between 12 to 56 right 15 20 25 until 55 right now let's try to decode this in the code from here yeah because that makes our life easier uh, that is called as reverse engineering right so we got the first banner we got here yes and we asked for uh, input lower range and that was provided and it was captured in n1 and then it was asked to provide higher range that was provided and captured in n2 and then it was print all numbers divisible by um, 5 between 12 that is n1 and 256 that is n2 right and then it gave the list of all the numbers divisible by 5 it actually um, didn't print anything which is not divisible by 5 how mm -hmm. because it, it, it said right uh, if that number is divisible by 5 equals to 0 not equals to 0 then continue that means to skip Right? you don't have to do anything but if it is divisible by 5 then you have to print that number i and then uh, 
mentioned as is divisible by 5 so 55 is divisible by 5 right okay so maybe we can try to and uh, at the end it we got thank you okay so maybe we can try to see when this part of the execution code will be executed right by clicking f5 and let's give an example of 5 and 5 so as we saw that if it will consider only if n1 is not equal to n2 right? else it will say print there was no valid range right all right guys uh, i think you had a um, good understanding of uh, the continue loop uh, continue loop statements right and we have one more thing to cover that is the pass uh, statement so which we are going to cover in the next session right um, i think we have covered quite a bit today and uh, uh, i would again ask you to practice as much as possible because that will make you perfect right more and more you practice more perfection you will have more confidence you will get right okay great uh, guys uh, so until next time keep watching and keep learning thank you